So the weight loss you expect with this is about 70 to 80 percent, so as opposed to 85 to 90 percent, so is about 10 15 percent less. The same with the resolutions. The resolutions of diabetes and blood pressure and cholesterol and sleep apnea is much higher with the bypass, 15 20 percent lower with the sleep, and still another 10 15 percent lower with the band. And again, it's a spectrum. So why do the sleep? Well, because it does have certain advantages. It doesn't put you at risk of as much micronutrient deficiency. You can still become iron deficient, but not to the extent that you get, you get with the bypass. And it does afford a little bit more freedom. Uh, and for patients who are lower body mass, let's say someone who is body mass index of 35 and has high cholesterol, this is a good choice because if they use that tool, eat correctly, they can lose that 60 pounds, they can bring their body mass index down to the 20s and feel good and the cholesterol most likely will resolve. But it's not the only choice, but it is a good choice. Um, also with the bypass, there's up to 1% risk of getting an ulcer at the junction where the pouch and the bowel are joined. Here you have no junction. It's all in one continuous format. So the risk of ulcers is not really an issue, but you still can. I mean, your stomach can always get an ulcer. So the key thing to appreciate between the two is they're different in their weight loss, and they're different in the way they work. And if you are more interested in the sleeve, then you have to make sure that you have that discipline. Okay. Now, they both also have up to 1% risk of leakage. And that happens through the staple line. Again, we've never, thank God, had it. But we always test for this. If it happens after two weeks, the patient presents with belly pain, nausea, vomit, fever, and they may have to go back to surgery. But just know that the staples remain with you for life. But they have done their work after two, three weeks. Because all they do is to hold the tissue together while your body heals everything. Once that's healed and scarred, those staples are redundant. They're not going to hurt you, but they're not going to help you either. So those leaks are only going to be an issue during the first few weeks while everything is healing. If you had no problems, then it's not an issue. It's not something that can come back on you a year down the line. If you eat with a bypass, a high sugar, high fat content food, an ice cream, cheesecake that is made of whole cream cheese, for instance, that goes straight into small bowel. Small bowel is not accustomed to receiving high sugar, high fat foods. And it's going to make the person feel very uncomfortable in 80% of cases. Makes them nauseous, sweaty, palpitations, colicky, gripey, maybe vomiting. That's called dumping. This is a way that your body is telling you, make a better choice next time. This is why this tool keeps the person on track as opposed to the person that is just going along with diet alone. Because that person who goes with diet alone is going to start eating unhealthy after a few years, and the stomach will accommodate that. Here, if you eat unhealthy, your body will tell you, uh-uh, don't like it, don't do it. So it keeps you on track, but it's only in 80% of patients. And that 20% that don't get dumping, you're as vulnerable as the person who never had surgery. Because if you start eating unhealthy and it will let you, you can gain that weight back. Now, this discrimination to certain foods does not happen with the sleeve and it does not happen with the band. So for those patients who want to have the sleep or want to have band, they have to have that comfort and that discipline and not be particularly sweet toothed inclined, not wanting to have carbs all the time and fats all the time because that's what happens that these patients fail if they keep eating unhealthy. And with the band and the sleep, it's easier to eat unhealthy. So if you decide to have these operations, you have to be able to work with them well. And part of that discussion that happens when we meet patients is about that. What are you best suited to? It's not that everyone can get a band or everyone can get a bypass. It's really what is tailor-made best suited to that individual patient. Everybody who gets weight loss surgery goes through some period around three to six months of thinning of their hair and maybe a little increased hair loss. More dramatic with a bypass, less so with a sleeve, and least with a band. 
and it's a reflection of your nutritional status during that first six months. Of course, as you get further away, you learn to eat better and you can make up that uh, nutritional deficit. But you all will get some thinning of your hair. And of course, as long as you take your vitamins and your proteins, it's self-limiting and it comes back by 9 to 12 months. Okay. Now, the sleeve is an operation where we don't re it. So it's kind of more physiological, if you like, but we do downsize the stump. So here, one goes in, it always done laparoscopically. You go in and you take away 80% of the bulk of the stomach and you throw it away. And in doing that, you now have reduced the secretory cells that induce hunger. And you also have much smaller capacity. So you eat small portions and you full full. But here, there's no discriminatory properties given to you. You are going to limit amount of what you eat, but not what you eat. So if you have unhealthy stuff here, it's okay. It's going to let you do it. But it's okay in the sense that you're not going to feel dumping, but it's not okay in the sense that if you become complacent and eat those unhealthy things over and over and over again, this is going to set you up for a failure a lot faster because you don't have that negative feedback anymore. So you have to recognize that. And that's why we were saying earlier, so you have to know if you're a sweet tooth person or someone who has those kind of concerns, whether you really would be a good match for a bypass or this. So if you are a sweet tooth person, this may not be a good match for you. But if you don't have much of a concern with that, this may be a very good match for you. And the weight loss here is about 70% of the excess. So whereas the bypass was 85, this is about 7. So there is about a 15 20% margin of improvement with the bypass compared to this, and there's a 15 20% margin of improvement when you compare the sleeve to the band, and those reflect themselves in the resolution of the comorbidities, and we'll see that in a second. Uh, here, again, there's up to less than 1% chance of leakage, as it is with the bypass, and uh, the uh, operation, very much like the bypass, uh, in terms of its aftercare, the difference really with these two from outside is not visible. When you look at two patients, one had a stick, one had a bypass, the incisions are exactly the same. Their post-operative recovery is the same. They're in hospital two nights, they go home on fluids for two weeks, soft fluids and solids. It's exactly the same. The vitamin requirements are exactly the same. What is different is the end point where you lose, how much you lose, and the resolution, what percentages of your comorbidities, 